V-Gates, my dog sport brethren and brotheresses, I'm Ashley Foster of Vizlaw Dog Training Centre and this is the first episode of IP Observations. IP Observations. IP Observations? The topic of this episode is the elegance of IPO, specifically exploring the fundamental concepts of the test and the ingenious challenge that it places upon dogs and handlers. But before we get into that, let's briefly summarise IPO in layman's terms. IPO stands for International Prüfungsordnung, which translates roughly into English as International Trial Rules, a name that is as descriptive as it is sexy, but don't let that put you off. Essentially, IPO is a dog sport, formerly known as Schutzhund, which means protection dog in German, and was created in Germany to train and test the innate attributes of German Shepherd dogs, but now includes a variety of working dog breeds, in a broad range of exercises that the supreme all-round working dog should be proficient in. In a nutshell, IPO is divided into three phases. Tracking tests the dog's ability to search the scent of a track laid down by an unknown track layer up to an hour before the dog is allowed to start. The track layer also leaves small objects known as articles on the track, which the dog needs to find and indicate to its handler. Obedience tests the dog's intelligence, physical abilities and willingness to work for its handler in a range of exercises, including heel work under distraction, positions in motion, retrieves over flat ground, over the hurdle and the A-frame, send away with emergency down and a long down while separated from the handler under distraction. Protection, the most iconic phase of the test from which the sport originally derived its name, tests the dog's ability to seek out an adversary known as a helper, which can be thought of in simple terms as a criminal that the dog and the handler are attempting to safely detain. Once the dog has engaged the helper, its job is to contain them with a hold and bark until one of three things happen. The helper attacks, in which case the dog must bite the helper and attempt to stop them. The helper tries to escape, in which case the dog must bite the helper and attempt to stop them, or the handler commands the dog to disengage from the helper. Now I didn't make this video to describe IPO in layman's terms, I specifically want to discuss the elegance of IPO as a test and how deceptively challenging it is. So what do I mean by elegance? Elegance to most people means beauty, but in science, mathematics or design it tends to describe something that is simple but effective. For example, the music of Mozart is elegant. The origin of species by means of natural selection is pretty flipping elegant. But IPO is genius. The reason I believe that IPO is an elegantly designed test is because on the surface it is very simple to grasp, which makes it a great spectator sport, but extremely deep once you get into it. At a fundamental level, IPO is a series of mini challenges that comprise of diametrically opposed requirements. To score maximum points, the dog must resolve heavily conflicted states of minds with clarity and confidence. If we take the concepts of speed and accuracy as an example, it's fairly easy to go fast without having to be accurate, like a drag racing car that only has to travel in a straight line as fast as possible. It's also fairly easy to do something that requires meticulous accuracy at a slow pace, like threading a needle. But to be able to drive at the speed of a drag racer, with accuracy equivalent to threading a needle, which is basically what is required of a Formula One car, is extremely challenging and takes huge amounts of resources, ingenuity and raw skill to achieve. Almost every exercise in IPO holds that same conflict of requirements, essentially a relentless balancing act at the core of each challenge which can be generally boiled down to drive versus control. To score maximum points in tracking, the judge wants to see a dog that wants to search with drive and intensity whilst being meticulous, slowly but surely checking each and every footprint, taking every turn without missing a beat, and indicating every article calmly and with care. In obedience, the judge wants to see a dog that is fully motivated without receiving any rewards, buzzing with energy but keeping under control, to show an intense relationship with its handler whilst also being comfortable on its own, and takes every action with speed and accuracy like a Formula One car. In protection, the judge wants to see a dog that has the strength, courage and instrumental aggression to engage, to take control of and to own its adversary, whilst at the same time reacting immediately and obediently to its handler in a safe and controlled manner. In the hold and bark, the judge wants to see the dog practically say to the helper, I've got you and I dare you to fight me, but be capable of instantly switching from active aggression to a state of total obedience if the handler calls the dog away from the helper. When the dog bites the helper, which is allowed only when the helper attacks or tries to escape, they must show that they are
are trying to fight and stop the helper, even when the helper becomes passive. When the handler gives the command to release the helper, the dog must do so without hesitation and immediately enter a new phase of guarding. Again, it's quite easy for a dog to actively engage with an active helper, but IPO protection work tests a dog's commitment against helpers that are active and passive. In every exercise of every phase, the dog is being presented with internal conflict, putting it under immense mental pressure. That's not to say that the goal of IPO is to put dogs in a stressful or negative state of mind. On the contrary, a truly accomplished IPO dog has learned to resolve and overcome these internal and external conflicts, the conquering of which is the ultimate reward and proves that they have what it takes to be called a true working dog. In conclusion, once you look beyond the surface details of IPO and begin to understand what it is that's being tested, you start to realise how the German Shepherd dog became one of the most iconic, most useful and most popular working breeds in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of IP Observations. If you want to see more like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to leave a comment, especially if you have feedback or interesting suggestions for future topics. Thanks for watching. Thank you.